Greetings out there folks, today we are going to discuss about Epstein-Barr virus. Epstein-Barr virus belongs to herpes family, it is double strand DNA, having double strand DNA. So now let's dive into the infection, the causes, the viral blood transmission route and also the presentation and treatment part. So it is Epstein-Barr virus implicated in a variety of human analysis, is causative agent of heteropoil positive infectious mononucleosis. Can you name some heterophile negative infection mononucleosis? Let's discuss. It will be coming later on. So hang on. So it's a virus infection is also associated with uh, what? It's also it's also associated with what? It's associated with B cell lymphoma, Hodgkin's disease, Burkitt's lymphoma and nasopharyngeal carcinoma. There are two age-related peaks of infection in early childhood and adult, young adulthood. In developing countries, Epstein-Barr virus infection is widespread in early childhood and is often asymptomatic. College students and military recruits experience the highest morbidity. Epstein-Barr virus requires close contact for transmission. You know, the name kissing disease comes from this. So, it is infection is usually contracted from an asymptomatic individual who sheds the virus. Pathophysiology. Epstein-Barr virus is transmitted via la salivary. Infects salivary secretions. After infecting the oropharyngeal epithelium disseminates through the bloodstream. The virus infects the B lymphocytes and causes an increase in the T lymphocytes, which results in enlargement of lymphoid tissue. In immunocompromised patients with decreased T cell function, the B cells continue to proliferate and proliferation may lead to neoplastic transformation. The manifestation of Epstein-Barr virus infection depends on age and immune status. Infections in infants and young children are often asymptomatic or have mild pharyngitis. Teenagers and young adults can develop infectious mononucleosis which presents fever, lymphadenopathy and pharyngitis. Tonsillar exudates are frequent and often extensive and may be necrotic appearing. You can see in this figure that is if you see here classic findings of tonsillar pharyngitis associated with lympho uh, infectious mononucleosis. See here it is very like extensive and also necrotic like it is there are exudates present all over the place so and patients so patients will have fever lymphadenopathy and pharyngitis and you will find tonsillar exudates and in more than half of the patients we will find splenomegaly that's why we will uh, like we will advise the patients to stay at home and rest for a while for a, at least three to four weeks for splenomegaly for us because if they play if they are participating in a sport then there will be splenic rupture okay patients treated with okay so that's why it will be uneventful mostly most patients will recover and severe fatigue severe fatigue will be there which is prominent feature and it can persist for months and patients treated with ampicillin or amoxicillin for suspected suspected streptococcal pharyngitis often develop a non-allergic morbidly formed rash if they have infection with Epstein-Barr virus and Epstein-Barr virus can nearly affect all the organ systems like new in neurologically you will find encephalitis, meningitis and Guillain-Barre syndrome and hepatitis, myocarditis and hepatological disorders are, are known complications. Rarely you can find death after some splenic lecture, splenic rupture or CNS complications and airway obstruction. Now how do you diagnose? So, if, suspe if suspecting infectious mononucleosis based on history and physical examination, a CBC and monospot test can aid diagnosis. Aid in diagnosis. Typically, there is lymphocytosis with more than 50% lymphocytes and atypical lymphocytes are found on the examination of the smear. There are reactive cytotoxic T cells that can be also be found in other illnesses, including cytomegalovirus. Okay, so you will find cytotoxic cells that are reactive and which can also be found in other illness including cytomegalovirus, HIV and viral hepatitis. The monospot test identifies heterophile antibodies that agglutinate animal erythrocytes. A positive result is considered okay considered diagnostic of Epstein-Barr virus and the monospot test may be negative early in the course like mostly in the first days and uh, the sensitive test is also decreased in infants and elderly. Testing is particularly important in pregnant patients because some other heterophile negative mononucleosis such as 
toxoplasmosis and cytomegalovirus virus can be teratogenic okay so that's why it is important in pregnant patients and now the treatment first we will advise the patient for rest and analgesia are the main treatments and in mo like most cases because it is self-limiting and not requiring any specific therapy some in case of severe disease we will advise for corticosteroids or else the patient should not be taking any corticosteroid because it will increase the complications like if the patient is having upper airway obstruction neurological disease or hemolytic anemia then only we will prescribe the will administer the patient with corticosteroids or else not uh, acyclovir is active against Epstein-Barr virus but is thought to be effective only for oral hairy leukopelechia associated with human immunodeficiency virus. So advise patients to avoid all contact sports for a minimum of three weeks after illness onset to avoid splenic injury. So this, so this is the 